Hi everyone! Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Susan. So I have a big announcement. It's been a little while since I've posted a video, like a month. Um, and my big announcement is that I am pregnant. So I am officially like three months, 13 weeks-ish pregnant now. So I've made it through the first trimester. And the first trimester was pretty darn hard way more difficult than my first pregnancy. So this is going to be my second baby. Um, our first little girl is two and a half years old, so she will be almost three years old when this second baby is born. I am due in August 2020, so that's coming up. That's in like six months. It's crazy to think that in six months from now I'm going to have two kids. I think in some ways I'm still adjusting to the fact that I have one kid. So the first trimester, as I said, was really difficult this pregnancy. Um, I was very, very tired for at least the first two and a half months. So the first month doesn't really count. So when you first get your, when you're um, supposed to be considered pregnant is when you get your period, so the first day of your last period. So you're actually not pregnant for the first couple weeks until fertilization actually happens. So during that time, obviously it was fine, it was like I wasn't even pregnant. Um, it wasn't until about four weeks or three and a half weeks that I started to feel really tired. And another big thing this pregnancy is that I've been very nauseous. Um, I haven't actually like thrown up, but I can just feel it all the time, constantly, like in my stomach and in my throat, just this feeling of being nauseous. And that, they say, can usually go away once you get into the second trimester. I'm like just in the second trimester now, and it's not really going away. Um, I have gotten my energy back, which is awesome, but the nausea is still there and still lingering. So when I found out I was pregnant, it was about three and a half weeks. Um, so three and a half weeks after the first day of my last period. Which is pretty early to find out, but my menstrual cycle is pretty short, so that means I'm ovulating a bit earlier than some people might be. So it, was, it made sense for me to test a bit earlier, because we were trying. The first time that I tested, it looked like a negative, um, and then I tested the next day, and I'm not sure how many days in a row I tested. Maybe it was two or three. But eventually I saw like a very faint line. When I was pregnant with my first daughter, we were also trying to get pregnant. So it was about the same amount of time, like 3.5 weeks is when I tested and found that I found a positive pregnancy test. When I was pregnant with her, our first baby, I had no symptoms, or at least I felt like I had no symptoms. None that I was aware of. I was pretty sure that I wasn't going to be pregnant but I decided to test anyways, and then I was. Um, the one symptom that I actually do remember was that the day before I tested, I was very, very hungry, like more than usual. Um, but besides that, I don't know, that didn't really seem like a big symptom at the time. I just figured I was just really hungry that day. But with this pregnancy, there was one major symptom that happened before I got my big fat positive that was a pretty big indicator that I was pregnant, but I still wasn't sure. It could have been anything. Um, but what I had was implantation cramping. So this is something I never experienced before, but I obviously have heard about it and researched it a little bit. And from what I knew about implantation cramping was that it just felt like a little tickle or like a tiny little poke or like something very, very small that happened like in an instant and then it was gone. But my implantation cramping was actually way bigger than that. What it felt like to me was period cramps. So my period cramps, it felt like my period cramps. So mine are not like very severe, but they're definitely noticeable. So it's noticeable that I'm cramping, but it's not like extremely painful. So anyways, I got these um, implantation cramps for a full day and a half but this was five days before my expected period. So I thought either there's something really wrong with me, which I did end up like making a doctor's appointment because I was like, I don't know what's going on here. Like, why am I getting cramps five days before my period and I'm not getting my period? Um, and then there was the possibility in my mind that, okay, maybe this could possibly be implantation cramping, even though 
I've never heard that it lasted for this amount of time or that it felt like this intense. And it wasn't extremely intense, but it was a lot more intense than what I had previously sort of heard about or read about. So that was my major symptom. A few days later I tested, well the first time I tested it, it looked negative. And then I tested the next day, maybe it was three days of testing in a row, I don't know. But eventually I tested and there was a very faint line. If I can find that photo on my phone, I'm going to put that photo in here in the video for you so you can see what my very faint line looked like. That same day that I got that very faint line ended up being um, the same day that I went to my doctor's appointment. So I went to my doctor's appointment and I told them, oh, I just found out today that I'm pregnant too. So they decided to do a pregnancy test on me as well. Um, so when I did my test, it was first thing in the morning. So when you do pregnancy tests, they say you should do it first thing in the morning because your urine is more concentrated, but throughout the day you drink water and stuff, so your urine gets a little bit more diluted. So when I did the test at the doctor's office, they told me that it came back negative. When they told me it came back negative, I was just like, okay, whatever, I don't really care that you have a negative pregnancy test. I know that it's a positive, so whatever. I know it's a faint line, maybe you're not seeing the line, or maybe I drank too much water, or whatever, but it was kind of like, I didn't really care. I knew it was positive. So at the doctor's appointment, I talked to him about pain that I was feeling in my uterus, and I wondered if maybe, maybe my uterus was like, out of alignment or something. Um, he didn't really check, I guess he kind of did. Maybe he did, and it's just like, I just wasn't aware of it, but he just said everything was fine, and that was about it. So it was after that appointment, maybe around like four weeks, so like a few days later, when I really started to get tired, like very tired. Um, so this was the end of November, and then in the month of December, I was attempting to make a video every single day, but what ended up happening is that I didn't end up posting all my videos. I did record them all. But anyways, um, during December, I went through a burnout. I got so tired, and at the time, I wasn't like associating that I was pregnant, so maybe that was the reason why I was so tired, but I just felt like so tired, so drained, so burnt out, and it was like a pretty horrible month for me. Um, so my views on YouTube went like, way, 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 way down, like a fifth of what they usually are. My income went way down, like a fifth of what it usually is. So it was a tough month, so then for the month of January, I decided to just do nothing but relax. So right now is the beginning of February. So for the last month, I have been relaxing, meditating, like connecting more with myself, and spending more like quality time with my daughter, and it has been so great just to do that. I'm feeling way better. As I said, I have pretty much gotten my energy back. Um, so usually they say when you get these certain symptoms like nausea and being really tired and maybe other symptoms as well, but it's usually really bad in the first trimester and then in the second trimester, usually not always, you feel a lot better and then you don't start getting really tired again until the third trimester because the baby's so big. When it comes to the nausea that I've been experiencing, that didn't really happen in the beginning. It started uh, probably, it got really bad around eight weeks, nine weeks. And yeah, it was really bad, like from eight weeks to say 10 weeks. And then it kind of dulled down, but it's still sort of this constant feeling. Um, I guess now, every once in a while, the feeling goes away, but then later in the day, it'll come back. But it's just this constant <laughs> feeling of like, not knowing if I'm gonna puke. Well, I know I'm not gonna puke because I haven't, and it's been like two months of feeling this way. So I know I'm not gonna puke, but just this constant nausea, it kind of drives you nuts sometimes. So anyway, that has been what's been happening with me for the last few months. I am really excited to start talking to you guys more about pregnancy, pregnancy symptoms, and like all the different myths and stuff like that that occur during pregnancy, as well as, well as making more like personal videos, sort of like this one where I'm talking more about myself. I don't know if you're interested in that. But sometimes it's nice to hear like people's actual experiences of what they're going through during pregnancy or when they're trying to conceive or 
through giving birth or whatever the experience might be. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys again very soon. Thanks, bye!